I believe that it is clear to most people that our current legislation on immigration is broken. Millions of undocumented immigrants living in these United States suffer as a result. And if the immigration system were not broken, we wouldn't be gathered here tonight debating the merits and negative consequences of Arizona's new law. Personally, I am deeply saddened that to date, our U.S. Congress has been unwilling to find a workable solution to this issue. And as a church and believing people, we must continue to advocate for a change in our laws that will finally bring justice for immigrants. And I believe, as do my fellow bishops, that this is a problem requiring a national solution it is not one to be solved state by state. The, the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops promotes comprehensive national immigration reform. And as we indicated in our 2007, 2008, and 2010 statements, the Minnesota bishops support the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops in their call for comprehensive reform legislation that would do the following. Recognize immigrant family stability and reunification as priorities. Insist that worker programs contain protection for U.S. and migrant workers. Allow for an earned legalization program that is realistic and fair for undocumented persons already in this country and restore due process protection for immigrants and address the economic, political, and social root causes of migration. The conversation about immigration is a very important one. It must be grounded in values that promote human dignity the rights of workers and an understanding of the current laws and the reality of, global, uh, the reality of globalization. Yes, we must have an appreciation for national security concerns and for the law, but we must also seek to understand the real economic stress and human suffering that is occurring. The characterization of an undocumented worker as just another lawbreaker who should be deported is short-sighted and does not begin to address the complexity, as we learn this evening, that underlies the decision to be in this country without documents. Immigrants, documented or undocumented, are our brothers and sisters. The best that it is in every one of us calls us to treat them as such. The vast majority of immigrants, documented or undocumented, contribute to and are part of our society. They participate in our economic system, raise their children in our communities, attend our churches, synagogues, and mosques. In short, they make our state and nation stronger. It is because of this great value we place on all human life that I am convinced that our immigration laws must be characterized by principles of justice, fairness, and mercy. I call on all faith communities and all people of goodwill to speak out for just and fair treatment of immigrants, beginning right here in our own community of Minneapolis, St. Paul. As was the case for many of our foremothers and forefathers, emigration does not come easily. It did not come easy for the Irish, the Germans, the Scandinavians. It does not come easy for the Hmong, the Liberians, the Somalis, the Bosnians, or the Latinos. 
as in the early days of immigration to this country, many people are experiencing the destructive results of significant economic and political upheaval. War, persecution, discrimination, intolerance, and economic injustice have created situations where many of our brothers and sisters have been forced to leave their native lands and to look for the peace and security that only their fellow global neighbors can offer. While the change may be an unwel a welcomed one, it is never easy to be a stranger in a strange land. I recall that in the 1800s, the Irish, and I have only Irish blood in my veins, who were starving to death in Ireland, were regarded by Americans as unfortunate victims to be generously helped. But those same Irish, having crossed the Atlantic to starve in Boston or New York, were described as the scourge of Europe and resented as an intolerable burden to the taxpayer. We cannot afford to treat today's immigrants like a plague, to be made invisible and without rights. Instead, people who have been uprooted, who have left all families and friends, need to see that the communities to which they come as places that foster healing, economic independence, and the development of their full human potential. Over the years, refugees and immigrants have contributed to the genius of the United States. They have helped to create opportunities to live out our US values of freedom, equality, and opportunity. They are a sign of renewal and revitalization, and we cannot close our doors or shut our eyes to the transformation from human tragedy to human possibility that can happen when people find safety and security in a new land. As the discussion tonight evidences, there is a considerable amount of passion and analysis that has led some very bright people to different conclusions on this issue. My prayer tonight going forward is that we engage in civil discourse on this issue. Where can we find common ground? And what values do we hold together that can propel us to find a solution that respects the dignity of the human person? And what solutions will allow individuals to support themselves and their families and overcome the tragic conditions of their native lands? And what responsibility does the United States have for economic conditions beyond our borders? Answering these questions can move us forward in a spirit of solidarity. And I pray, pray that we can listen carefully to one another and move forward in a spirit of compassion for all of those concerned. 